Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Uh, let's see if it's turned on. Oh, something happened to this bear yesterday. And I guess the temperature was warmer than what? I don't know if I had a heat exhaustion or what, but uh, I didn't do too good last night. Actually, not starting the day out today too good because here it is quarter to three in the afternoon and I'm just now getting out to my cousins to uh, look at the trailblazer because I've been thinking about it and that I really hope I can get the motor to turn far enough to where we can get the torque converter bolts undone if I can do that then the motors going to go out the front end like normal so yeah but uh, last night I looked at the wife once and I said I almost thought I was going to end up in the ER. I was having really bad gut pain and uh, I took a medicine, cleaned me out and I finally started feeling better. I dozed off for a while, woke up, talked to a few people on Facebook and that. And one of, one of my guys called and I finally went to bed about 11.30. I heard the wife getting ready for work today. I went to get up and I didn't. Then I woke up and I thought it was 10 o'clock. But I went to, I sat up in bed and I fell right back into the bed. Uh, my back where I've got my early degenerative arthritis that I've had since I was 15. That area in both legs did not want to work to start the day out. It was, so if the clock was right when I looked at it, um, that was 10 o'clock. It took me two hours to get out of bed this morning. And then I took a nice long hot shower. Things kind of loosened up, but it's, there's, it's still not right. So anyway, I'm going to go in and lift up the top. It's the, 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 the Trailblazer, Jesus, and uh, see if we can get that motor to spin far enough and get to the torque converter bolt. So, all right, yep, it's official. The block is busted. I finally found it. it. Went through the block, but it don't look like it went through the oil pan, which that's kind of good. So the oil pan, or keep it for spare, I guess. <coughs> uh, yeah. So, oh, and I, I, yep, being on a hoist, I can get that last intake bolt now. Take that out, and the, the intake will be out of my way. Then I can see a whole lot more down in there. So, and then I, with the intake out, I should be able to get the torque, the, 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 the. <laughs> with the intake off, I should be able to get to my, transmission bolts that's what I wanted to spit out so I'm gonna time to go out and grab the tools and then we gotta get the front drive shaft out of this thing because that 4x4 unit stuff will come with that and uh, I don't know cousin's got a drain here I might end up bringing my power washer over here and degreaser and power washing the ever living blankety blank out of this thing once the motor's out get her all cleaned up and with it being up on the hoist, hell, I might even just give the whole bath, give a whole, give the whole thing a bath underneath, and uh, maybe put some coating on the frame to protect that. So, but right now, our main concern is to get the thing running and moving, and then uh, we can go from there. So, all right. Oh yes, having a hoist got the back bolt out, and then. Uh, Let's hold it now. Huh. And then there was a bolt hiding behind this uh, rubber hose here. So let's see what is holding there now. Oh, it's just tight fit <clears throat> I 
Oh, these stupid fuel lines. Really? Huh. All right, I'm gonna have to get the. I might have to run back and get my fuel disconnectors. I forgot them. I know I did. Get those, and that would have enough room. And unfortunately, since I want to pull the motor out the top, I think I want to have to uh, open the AC. It's got a little pressure in there, but not much. It's not a full charge system. So, all right. This uh, here used to work good. They're not tore up, but they suck. Now this Lyle disconnect the different colored ones. Right in there, boom, done. Ah. Got the fuel line undone. So, watch this. That's on the hook back there. What do we got hooked back there? Ah, that's what we got hooked. Okay. Wiring loom. See the motor that's going in here. <laughs> really? Now the stupid AC lines in the way? They're really? Oh, let's see. And I got a phone call, so. Oh, I am so glad I got a hoist to work with. I got ground wire back there to get, and then another knock sensor behind that. But you look down there, right there is a chunk of the block. Right in that area is where the hole is in the block. So I don't think they broke the oil pan, which is good. So, yep, we got all this out. There's the radiator and condenser laying there. But here's what else I just realized too. I've got, let's see, right there, back behind that, that's the heater hose going to the, over here. Well, guess what? Having dual AC, guess what else you have dual of? Yeah, I've got a dual heater hose. So I've got to get that line loose from the block because that line goes down and goes down the driver's side and I cannot see where to disconnect it there. <sighs> but uh, yeah, I've got so much undone. Got the power steering down out of the way. Um, I'm looking at the time. I guess everybody wants to go to the rec center tonight. So, and I kind of do too. See if that helps my back and legs and uh, see what's going on. So. And I just had the brother-in-law that helped me get the transmission for the gray truck. He stopped to see how things were going and told me, he's like, well, at least we didn't put it in and have a break going down the road. I'm like, yeah. And I had a guy say today his train, he's screwing up, but he was going to drive it until it quits. Well, and that's a 2002. So I might be, uh, might be, uh, pshit. I'm losing it. So I think what I want to do is get put it down more, undo the starter wires, and get the starter out of there and see if the torque converter bolts line up there. If they do, then I'll turn it over. And then I can get on with the impact and boom, take the uh, torque converter bolts out. And if I can get them to spin, let's get the motor to spin all the way around to where I can get the all three bolts. Then I think we're going to have this thing licked. Then I will start pulling the front tires and the A-arms and half shafts and all that out in the driver's side to uh, 
strut or whatever they call that, spring, whatever, get that out because I got to remove the motor mount on the driver's side of the frame so it'll clear. So, yeah. And then I'll have to move it. There's not enough room here, so I'm going to have to move his toolbox to use the cherry picker in here. So, this is starting to shape up and go nicer than what I thought. It's starting to get there, but what am I going to do with this AC line? How to get that out of the way without breaking it? I'm not sure because there's a block and it's all welded in and then stiff line going down and stiff line going over. I wish that line right there was a rubber hose and then I could have just flopped that over out of the way. So, <sighs> yeah. Oh well. But, uh, now yeah, taking the AC condenser and the radiator out. I'm like, I'm going to have to reseal this anyway. When we do this, we'll put new seals on the back connection point for the rear AC. Because it was not empty, empty. Well, I take that back. It was either letting air in through that valve up there for the low side. Or I, because nothing came out, so. Um, I think why I've got it apart this far, we're just going to reseal everything like there and all the lines. Make sure it is good to go. But, uh, alright, well, I'll raise her up one more time and maybe we'll, no, i got to let it down, see if I can get the starter off and out of the way. And then, uh, see where the, if the torque converter, one of the torque converter bolts happened to be in the starter hole. I spoke too soon. I jinxed myself. There's torque converter bolt. And I cannot get the motor to make a 360 degree rotation. Um, and there's that. Where is it? Alright, there's that hot water tee. You go to the back, so yeah. No way of undoing that either. So, that changes the game plan. That changes the game plan. It might sim be simpler for me to pull the transmission transfer case out of this. And pray I don't drop the tranny while we're pulling it off and we're going to have to have a catch pan under there because the torque converter is going to dump all the fluid. But yeah, I've decided I am not going to pull the body off this. Um, so yeah, but I guess everybody wants to go to the rec center and I do too. And I need to go home and t get my arms and that all cleaned up and changed my clothes and crazy you guys go home and take a bath to go get play in the water <laughs> uh, so that's some good even getting a late start in the day we got some good progress on the trailblazer so yeah I just hope I remember how this one goes together because unfortunately I don't have anything to compare this against so, got a lot of ground wires going down the driver's side. Ground wire sensors, cam sensor, knock sensors. There's a lot of some, uh, a lot of stuff. Lots of wires on this thing. But uh, yeah, will I do another one of these motors like this? Probably not. <laughs> so. Nice little vehicle, but uh, yeah, probably, probably not going to touch another one of these like this. So, I guess with that, my deadlines are coming, and I'm not foreseeing being able to meet them. So there might be a change coming without choice. <laughs> this is the way to say that, but. Uh, yeah. What else can a person do? So, uh, 
yeah, I guess I was thinking about stashing stuff here, but one load it up, take it, put it back away. And that's the only downfall of not uh, this not being my place. This is a 30 by 40 building, and I think two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Must be 16 foot ceilings. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Doors 12 foot tall, and there's three to four foot above it. So yeah, it's 15 or 16 foot ceilings in this. I mean, there's how close the hoist comes. So if I get an addition built, I got to be at least 16 foot tall to have the hoist fit comfortably. I won't put in a 12 foot tall door because. I ain't gonna work on anything that tall. Probably put a an eight to ten foot tall door, but not a twelve. I, I don't have a call for a twelve. Uh, so yeah, and I would have the office on the other end, so I'd have a place for records and a place to go sit down and relax, and I could have air conditioned and and uh, then one end, if depending on how. I, if I add on to the shop, or if I don't, and just build a standalone building, uh, I'd have one end, like over here, with the garage door, and put the hoist here. So that way, the hoist, when you like, like I said, I got to move the box to in order to use cherry picker. So that's the only downfall. Um, so, all right, I better get picking up and get going. So yeah, hopefully here. Once I know I can get the, the motor loose, then I'll knock the front end apart. That'll be nice having this on the hoist because then it'll be right there. I won't have to put jack stands in that. Well, I'll bring jack stands over so it ain't sitting on its hoist while I bring the other motor over. But uh, the other motor should be ready to go. So once we get this one out, it's just a matter of going over, load mine up, and then bringing it over and put it on. So, All right. See you guys later. I guess we're getting the trailblazer done.